Good morning, world. Here we are, Sunday morning edition. People are waiting patiently. It's too early for popcorn, but what are you drinking that's keeping you up? Coffee? I had a little bit too much coffee last night. And I actually took a nap, which I never do. I took a nap about 3 to 5 p.m. And then I was super groggy. And I had some coffee. And I had to take a shot of espresso around 8 or whatever to stay awake. Went to bed about 11.30. Woke up at 12.30. And then slept for a couple hours. Woke up at 3. Checked my responses. Responded to a couple people. Went back to bed. Woke up like 30 minutes before my alarm. Um, went back to bed. Just weird. Nothing bad. I, I feel rested. Just And no coffee now. So now I'll probably fall asleep. <laughs> Anyhow, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Good evening, depending on where you are. Nordic Maelstrom. Yeah, you were up early for sure. Uh, you're drinking H2O. Haven't had caffeine in over a year. Wow, good for you. That's my drug of choice. I could give up every. I could give up everything else. I like to talk about alcohol, but I never drink. No, says the person who had a beer yesterday. <laughs> It was just part of the experience. Um, I had Greek food yesterday. So, of course, I got Byzantines on my mind. We're going to talk a little bit about them this morning before we get into the polls. Because, you know, I did change the name of the channel to Figuratively Speaking. As it should always have been called. Just like my blog. Because I love talking about figures. Um... Unfortunately, it's only 15s and 20s. Well, 20s, I'm way out of out of practice on. I don't I don't know what's going on with them anymore. But the 15s for this ancients and medievals. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of those Byzantine figures that they're unboxing on because several people had some questions on them, and uh, you know, you had to stop drinking things because of kidney stones. Yeah, yeah. I had a coworker that had a bunch of that stuff that um, did that and uh, he was in severe pain like he was he, he had something that he said that um, his body was producing too much calcium and um, he was in a role that's relatively active um, at work so he couldn't really do what he was doing and still have those kidney pains but he was in a lot of pain I don't want that I, I, don't, I don't want that but this is half tea, half water, so there's not a whole lot of caffeine in there, but that's that's my one drug of choice. I don't I don't really do anything else, but it gets things accomplished for me. But um, anyhow, Byzantines. So here's the box of Byzantines that I did an unboxing of the other day and I happen to like Old Glory um, and this is coming from a standpoint where Old Glory used to have 50 figure packs now they've cut them in half so I like them even more um, my only gripe with them is that the manufacturer doesn't have them in stock so it takes them a little while to get them so you do need to plan your addiction a little bit kidney stone pain is no joke worst pain I ever felt and not good not good um, so you got to wait for these guys to be made um, so you got to plan you know what you're doing kind of in the future um, a little bit so um, I guess I should probably do this just for um, just for completeness. There we go. We'll take the little Polish eagle off. Not because it's not cool, but we're not talking about that stuff. <laughs> Good morning, Ian. Top of the morning to you. Even though it's completely dark here. It'll be light shortly. So, 
they they changed. I want to say around two thousand and seven to doing twenty four figure infantry packs and nine figure um, mounted packs. And I think their command are also nine. I should know because the one pack I opened is these guys. It might actually be more than nine. Let's see who's in here. The Byzantines. Just finished a book on them by Mr. Charles Oman. I always thought it was Oman, like the country, but I think it's Oman. Um, and I really liked it. I really liked his writing style. So we've got three. One, two, three. Let's, uh, let's erect it. Let's put this a little bit more erect. And how do I get a more complete view? Let's see. Let's, um, this is like the hardest thing I have to do. Move it in a way. Painting shields is easy compared to trying to get this in the right direction. All right, so I need to, I need to keep them here close to my, what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, let's open this up. And let's zoom in. All right, now we got some visualization here. If you pay $2 more for the Field of Glory Battle Group packs, you get eight more or more extra miniatures pack. Yeah, but I don't know who's in the pack, though. I like the fact that they show me everybody who's in the pack, and I want to get at least one figure of everybody. Um, yeah, I don't... Most of these figures I don't need. I would just need these kind of just to couple of one-offs. You know what? I got, I need space to work in here. So let's zoom in. Like, like I told you, this is not edited. This is completely, um, we make mistakes and you're not going to see perfection on this channel. Before I forget to ask, do you by chance know what colors to use to achieve a wrought iron look for cannons? Well, Careful what you wish for. I'm glad I have these things to show now. I used to not have any cans. Let's move these perfume lovers out of the way. Wrought iron. Okay. So, the jury is still out. If you think of wrought iron, the first thing I think of is something that rusts like a mother. Now, I don't know if cannons of this time period got rusty, oxidized. Let me use the science terminology. If they oxidized. Or they oxidized, but they created so much soot, they w you wouldn't even be able to see the oxidation. I've seen people paint rusty things on things before, and I think it's extremely hard to get right. And so I've just foregone the, the, even attempting to get into it. So I don't put any oxidation on the, on the, um, on the, on my gun. So with that said, I think I can actually show you in the order that I painted them in. So the first one I did 
was this French Ordnance piece. Man, the view screen's all the way over here. Holy cow, okay. And this is just primer black. And one of my favorite things to do, a painting of anything, is making these things that are supposedly of wood, but obviously they're not real wood because they're a miniature. So making them look wood-like. And this is an Old Glory crew from their 100 Years War line um, of a French Ordnance cannon. It is just black. This is before I used any Nuln oil. It's just black with a tiny little bit of highlighting of, um, of a metallic color. Let's see if I can bring this up and hopefully not move it too much. I know you guys are probably having disconnecting issues and stream issues, but you know. Oh, well, this is cool. I got to share this. DP Yupa PS4 just subscribed. Hey, welcome. Even though I'm an Xbox uh, One player. Uh, we welcome all kinds here. So hopefully you'll find something interesting here. Um, if you're on, uh, please let me know what it is, what kind of content that made you want to subscribe to this. What kind of stuff that I have on this channel that appealed to you. Um, maybe we can work something, that, do something that works for both of us. So that's all this is. This is just black with um, just tiny little bit of of, I'm going to say silver, but I don't mean silver, like some iron or bolt gun metal or something like that highlighting. Just real simple. Okay. Next one I did, let's see if I get this in order. I think I did the, Bur did I do the Burgundians. Well, this is the other wrought iron one that I have. I, there's actually two guns, two of these guns in, in this army, in the French Ordnance. One of them has a blue crew and the other one is red crew and they've got the little French crosses on here that they did of that period on their um, on the front of the uniform as soon as I find one geez where is it there we go that's it this is all old glory I have two of them I don't know I just brought one okay here is my Burgundian gun crew and it's a similar type of gun similar period uh, late 1400s not quite into the 1500s and I wanted guns that were mobile not ones that were just kind of uh, you know they're on the carriage that just sits on the ground okay and it's done the same way now just for color differences I wanted to do a blue stained can maybe this almost looks like something like that the Prussians would use in the Napoleonic period. Um, didn't necessarily base it on that. I just think it looked okay. Let's see if we can do better than that. I'm getting a lot of glare from my light. And it's the same way. It is completely black and just highlighted. And this is also pre normal oil. What I would do now, what I'm, what I'm doing is, I'm, the only thing I'm doing differently is um, I'm adding null oil to add another little shade in there just for some added depth. And null oil dries so quick that I am not bothered about using a wash. So, now this is a... This gun has a story. Um... This is a, let me think of what it's called. The gun crew and the gun are all by the same manufacturer. And the manufacturer is War Games Foundry. They used to make 15 millimeter stuff. And I don't think I had my channel on yet, but I had mentioned out loud that um, Marty actually has some guns I'd never seen before. And it's a different style of gun than this one. And, um, I offered to like, you know, buy it from him. He wouldn't sell it to me because I was just going to strip it, repaint it. It looks kind of like a needle gun, so to speak. It has a carriage like this, but it's very needle-like point. 
And I've seen pictures of it for the Burgundians, and I'm like, that's the one I want. And I uh, found out it was made by um, War Games Foundry. They did a few figures before my time, meaning I wasn't... Before my time in Medievals is before 2005, 2004. I didn't, um, I didn't paint any stuff, didn't, wasn't aware of any of, this, of those things. So uh, I had put out on some blog, or maybe it was on Fanaticus or something like that, hey, can somebody find these War Games Foundry things? And somebody responded back with, hey, I've got one. Um, I don't even know that they even let me pay them for it. I forget what it was. It was it was a while ago, but they were real gracious. They had this extra crew. It wasn't exactly the gun I was looking for, but the crew is the same. And um, these are kind of small, smaller size 15s. And um, that's the story of this gun. So um, anyhow, this is all War Games Foundry. Done the same way with the... Um, the thing now I decided to paint whether it's right or wrong I decided to paint the wheels like they were covered in thin steel I don't remember I've seen differing views on whether or not to do that I just figured if I wanted a gun crew if I wanted a gun painted in a color and I've got several of them uh, my German one is red I've got a yellow German one um, I don't necessarily go with a colored one it just depends on the army and it's going to roll on those things. The, the the color on that wheel is going to look very different than on the rest of it. And I didn't want to have to do any kind of intense weathering. So this is my way to um, this is my way to get get away from that. But this is a War Games Foundry. Uh, you can tell the they have a particular aiming uh, elevation method here that they use of the period where they've got this like almost like this rod on there towards the back of the um, of the tail of the gun where they can you know adjust it up and then and then put a pin in there to hold it into position and uh, this the old glory one has has the same type of mechanism on the gun as well a little bit different so anyhow these those are my two wrought iron ones and I'm happy with how it is now so that's how I do wrought iron and I'll show you how I do bronze as well since we're talking about guns and I got two examples of that and they don't look that different because I've seen bronze guns that are really bright looking and they just look wrong to me now they may have been that way in real life but this is my artistic license and I just I can't sleep at night if I paint them really bright so here's my Ottoman cannon this is all by it's funny this is four different gun crews and it's four different manufacturers perfect so this is um peter no not peter pig uh, mike's models ottomans and they're very smurf like almost ziggy like figures this is also painted black and it has a dusting of the bronze color which i use a lot I'm getting some lag on my feet, so color 175. Let's see, where's the name? Here we go. Vallejo bronze. I use this a lot, and um, it just has some dry brushing on there, trying to avoid the gaps and stuff like that. And it's held together by ropes and so forth, and. That's how I did it. And here is another one, the one I did recently for the Valakians. This is an all Essex gun crew. And I did it much the same way. Uh, and of course the muzzle should all be black because that's a sooty monster. <laughs> a sooty monster, so. And uh, and yes, the the they're out of ammo because all of the of the ammo that's left or is too big to go into the barrel here. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, I hope that answers your question. But that's what I do, and it works for me. And I'm happy with the results. And actually, there's a lot of shine on here. So this particular gun is not as bright as you may think it looks. It's just the light is catching all of it. But 
This one has a little bit of a, gr a green tinge to the gun carriage. I like the way that looked. And so does the Ottoman one. So I figured, hey, this is probably a captured piece from the Ottoman Turks. I figured Wallachia probably doesn't have their own cannon foundry or... Anyhow, whatever. I My own little backstory, that was my reason why I did it. Uh... I like the fact the color you use for the carriage is a color I just put on four guns I'm working on. You have good taste. It works nicely, you know. Um, I love I love artillery. It's it's like a little diorama. It's like a little diorama. All right, let me put these away so I don't have this chaos here. I'm going to take two at a time. I don't want to drop these on the ground. other two I love talking about figures I really do these little miracles that these people are sculpting that's my German one German ones, I have a Spanish one. Because I'm going to backdate my Comnenans when I do them also to the Constantinians. The Constantinians have a command post in their army. And that brings me to one of the questions I plan on answering this morning. Is uh, Greg was asking me uh, what I was going to use for the emperor in the Byzantine army. And that brings me to the figures here that we have um, of... We're playing in this corner, okay. So let's look at the um, let's look at the horse, the horse figures. Let's get the actual horses out of the way. We we'll talk about them right now. And in the Constantinian army, the command post is listed as a very specific nomenclature for this, okay, and. I'm going to take this as being Romanos. I forget what his name, first name is, or his last name. Anyways, um, at Menzikert. He They can have a cavalry general or if emperor on his horse with purple caparison with Varangian escort is a command post. Okay, so what the hell does that mean in English? Well, you know what emperor means. And he's mounted on a horse. Purple caparison, that's a cloth, purple cloth horse with Varangian escort. That's those Viking guys. Now, I did a little bit of research and I was surprised to find that the Varangian guards, not until... 1071, 1072, something like that, the Varangian guards did not use, were basically spearmen. They didn't use uh, axes. Um, I was surprised. I thought they were always axemen. So um, the escort for them on the stand is not going to be Varangian guards with the axes, which is kind of nice because I only had four of them and I need them for an actual blade stand in the later Comnenan army. So the guys that the foot guys on the commanders on the on the emperor's stand in the command post are going to be non axemen. 
Okay. So with that bit of information, I didn't have any. I don't have any spearmen that um, that were like that. So I ordered the pack that I had to order for spearmen covers me on that as well. But we'll get to that in a second. So mounted commanders that we have. We have a guy with a mace. And I'll be honest with you. I'm a little bit racist against maces. Can you be that? Yeah, you can make anything racist these days. So I'm just going to roll with the punches. I don't like maces. I think they look stupid most of the time. Um, there's nothing more commanding than a sword. You know, I'm a sword fan. Maces are just for, you know, they're for clerics. <laughs> you got a guy with a sword here. All right. Um, we got a guy with a big crested helm. Pointing. Or punching in a direction. Not the only mounted fig. That's the only mounted commanders. We got flag bearers and stuff like that. We got regular. Oh, we got regular dudes with flags here. The armor is really nice because you can see it's chainmail, and on the back, it's got almost like those strips of leather that are around the back of his helmet. These guys are going to paint really nicely. Um, that's the only three mounted guys that I have. Oh. Now here's another guy with a flag. So my intent is to use this guy as the as the commander, as the emperor. Okay, in the command post, and forget the the mace guy and this guy with an axe with the uh, with an axe. No, I don't like guys with axes either, as because the commander sword. Get a sword, damn it! And um, this guy will be the general in the Comnenan army. He also has like a little tuft on the back of his helmet. So he's got a cape. So this is going to be the commander. This is going to be the knight commander in the book four, one army. And I'm building the A and the B. And they're going to do double duty as knights and cavalry, the, the, the mounted troops. I'm not, I'm not making one set and then making another one. They'll, they'll do double duty. And this will be the commander in the uh, Comnenan in the uh, Constantinian army. So these horses that come with him, I'm not sure which horse I'm going to use for um, the commander here. Um, it just depends on what route I go with the with the horses. It's unlikely that I'm going to use half armored ones. I'm probably going to use ones that have no armor. I don't want to make them look super knight looking, and then sometimes they play as cav. So I, that's a decision I can make. This guy's definitely not going to use any of the horses. I have a horse specifically for him. And that brings me to getting the figures that I already pulled out the other day for the Comnenan army. Okay? And they have all kinds of stuff in here. So, Mr. Dirk, a mace shot delivered from horseback is quite devastating. Oh, yeah. I just don't think, I don't, I, I think you look kind of dorky. That and Old Glory, I like Old Glory, but sometimes the sculptor can give them cheekbones that are too big. I am a cheekbone disliker, so I don't like figures with really dominant cheekbones. I don't have them, and um, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't like them. And this guy, I don't know if you can tell in this picture. Let's see, where do I need to move him for the middle? This guy has... Some extremely prominent uh, you can't make it out. You just have to trust me. He's got really dominant cheekbones, so you're out. You're off the team, pal. It's like Victoria's Secret. You just don't have the right look for me. Good. Stayed up with Tony till 3 a.m. painting, so slept in till midday. Awesome. The drones are lagging your stream again. It was freaking. I wish they would just settle that. Just blow each other up or whatever it is. I'm kidding. That war is stupid. It doesn't make any sense still. You haven't been to bed yet. Wow. All right. Let me find what we got here. Let me move these two guys to the side. And let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, I 
do have some archers. Well, that's cool. This is for the earlier. So these are Byzantines also. Some of these guys are guys that I'm going to use for the um, Heraclean army. We're going to be building them at the same time. And here's some Saloy. Um, oops. I think these figures are in here. They are. These are all white horse. Perfect. All right. So in the night pack, in the command pack from Elaine Tuller. Along with the commander. And the bad thing about these figures is, well, let's, let me give you an, an example. Here is a knight or the or a similar figure to the old glory i'm not going to pull out their knights just yet but they look like this they look like this except they don't have uh the little banner on them okay these are almost identically sized figures and i knew that going in because i do a lot of old glory so we're going to mix both of these in together okay these are very bendy very bendy lances so we're going to replace all the lances with pins on both of them. The old glory ones as well. They don't have to worry about it. But in here is some horses that are caparisoned. I think there's three of them. And the commander for this army is kind of lame looking. Um, he's not commanding enough. And here he is. And look, he has a sword too. And he has that little tuft at the back of his helmet, like the old glory does. Okay, here's the three comparison horses. So I need to see if my um, my general, the emperor, can fit on one of these. Now the first one I'm thinking of, he's going to be the only mounted figure on that stand. The rest of the guys are all going to be his attendants, heavily armed attendants, but attendants nonetheless. So, let's move him off to the side. You didn't make the cut, pal. Sorry. And um, this is the figure. So, I don't want a horse that's just taken off and running because the other people aren't going to catch up. Now, both of these are the same pose, these two particular horses. So, we'll toss one of them away. So, it's between these two horses here. Okay. And these old glory figures have a built-in saddle, which I actually prefer than the Essex method. But you have to put it on a horse that also has the same thing or take the saddle off. So if you put them on here, it's going to take a little bit of cutting to get it to fit. A little bit of filing. But I think he just should fit in there fine. And here's your purple caparison thing. Now, we'll probably have to put some Byzantine-type symbols and shit on that. You know, um, make it real crazy. This guy's going to be f fancy as shit, for sure. And um, does he fit any better on this horse? No. But it's enough that... I'm going to take both of these horses and they're not going to go in this pack because they're going to go with them. This other commander is bound to be on one of the old glory horses, whether the half armored one or a fully armored one, just for him. But the emperor is definitely going to go on one of those purple ones. And But I knew going in, old glory and these guys are about the same size, so they should fit in there nicely. All right, so let's put these guys away. And then we'll take a look at these attendants that are gonna go in with the commander. Because it is a command post, so a command post, if you're not familiar with it, and I actually have the DBMM, the DBMM books, and one, th one thing I thought was very strange is that there is no command post 
in the DBMM list for the Constantinians. So I'm not sure what is different in DBMM where you would represent that stand in a different way. Maybe it's a mixture of two different stands and they operate together or something, but there's not a command post in the Constantinian army in DBMM listed. So we're going to have a commander. We'll just call it this horse for now. The emperor. Wherever he went. Here he is. And we're probably going to have a guy with a banner on it. So it fights as a blade. So, um, and it's a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, it can advance in a combat. It can't advance in a combat. It doesn't cost two pips to move. It can be 40 by 40 or 40 by 80. Mine will be 40 by 40. Um, and it's a blade general, basically. So it is a strong stand that can only be killed by being doubled or outscored by infantry if it has at least two units in contact with two different sides on a tie. So, and it doesn't recoil. So it's like a horde that doesn't advance and can only be killed on a tie by other, inf by other infantry if two of the sides are in contact. So if it's surrounded, so to speak, and you tie on it, then it can pick up, or you just have to double it. Well, it's going to be really hard to double a stand that has those numbers. And, and by the way, knights don't quick kill it either. So it needs to have a nice show of force, okay, because that is a hefty freaking stand. Um, and that's like my pope, you know. There's a lot of guys on the pope stand. I forget, there's like seven or eight or nine guys on the pope stand. Um, good morning, company. Video is lagging. Voice is good. Yep. Well, luckily, I don't have a lot of movement on the video, so the lagging should be okay, as long as the voice is good. It's the damn drones, man. It's the drones. I can stay up for 30 hours without caffeine if I want to. Wow. Well, that's not my superpower. Yeah. So, anyhow. Um... So we need a guy with a banner, and then there's some guys here that are kind of command figures. Oh, look, a guy with a mace. Well, I'm not completely anti-mace. Some of the sissier people can have a mace. You know, we got a guy that blows a horn. Um, those guys are different. Um, and then the rest of them, what is that? One, two, three. Because the other guys is another mace guy. I mean, they have a different pose for a mace. I'll probably put one guy with a mace on there. One guy with a horn. Because they've got a couple guys blowing. Well, those are the same pose. Um, is that typical for a Byzantine army to have people blowing? I'll leave that right there. Oh, look, they even have a couple different poses. <laughs> I make fun of everything. Here is the heavy infantry, BZ-16. Okay, so let's move these winners, winners to a side, to the side. So how do you actually run this command post if you can't advance into combat? It just sits there. It does. It's kind of like a war wagon, but it doesn't shoot. Didn't it start working when we started talking about women yesterday? What, the internet? Well, I'm not shopping for women anymore, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at what's in this heavy inventory pack. And I think I need to give myself a little bit more room. <laughs> And there we go. All right, so in here, God, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. Wish I had this technology 10 years ago. I wouldn't have to take my glasses on and off. Okay, we got a couple different shields. These are late Byzantine guys. We have almond shields. 
they call, they call them kite shields. I call them almond shields. A kite shield to me is the more full one. Is a more standard shield like this. This is a kite shield to me. So you can call these a kite shield. I'm going to call them an, an almond shield to differentiate them from a kite shield. Okay, so we got kite, kite. Ooh, a different kind of kite or one that wasn't molded properly. Here's another one. Around. Interesting. And this is the command pack that they call for 11th to 13th century. Their words. Okay, here's another round guy. Almond. Almond. Round. Round. Round is earlier. No, oh, this is almond. Here's another almond. Round. There should be a predominant amount of of, of the almond ones. Yeah, this is more of a kite-shaped shield. Oh, and of course they're off the screen. Oops. All right, um, almond, 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 round, round, kite, kite, kite. Okay, so let's get the kite guys out of here. If I was going to do a Paleologan or something like that, I'd probably use the Kite Guys. And I may eventually do a Paleologan at some point. I may just be super psyched to do these folks. Um, by the time the Kamenin uh, army happened, the round shields, um, I didn't know this, that this type of shield um, was, according to reference that I saw, was the Byzantines invented it. It was their invention. They were the first people to use it, according to this source. Didn't know that. I had no idea. I figured the Normans would have invented it or something like that. That's what you associate with the Normans is the teardrop-shaped shield. That's probably more accurate than almond-shaped shield. But anyhow, um, so these earlier round ones, the only people in the Komnenan army that used them was the Varangian guard still held on to them. So... Um, because they're a Varangian guard type thing, and I'm not going to build a uh, Nikephorian army um, anytime soon, and they have people that specifically make Nikephorian figures, uh, Kurosan for one, um, I'm not going to use these guys for an earlier army. So I think this is the spearman that I'm going to use on the Varangian guard because they are also round. So there's your throwback into the, they're still using the round shield when they go a little later. And I don't really have a use for them in the Komnenan army. So this is probably the foot guys I'm going to use um, with the emperor. It's probably these round guys right here. So we're going to put... Um, and, and the Varangian guard at that time did not use um, axes. Or at least that's what was listed in one of the references. I have no idea. I figured they were axemen the whole time. Now, here's one of my gripes about Old Glory. And, um, and this is why I don't ever want to be sponsored by anybody. Because if somebody does something that I think is kind of sorry, I want to call them on it. I want to be honest. I don't want to be like, well, this stuff sucks, but uh, they're sponsoring me. So I'm just going to dance around the, dance around the problem. And I think every, every miniature manufacturer has something that you like and something that you don't like. Um, for Old Glory, even the... Forget the cheekbones. I've painted plenty of those cheekbone guys, and I'm okay with them. Just, just they're not my, they're not my favorite. The problem with them is look at their, look at their spears. They're, they're okay in size, but they're super kind of bendy. Um, they're flat. They're really thin on this end, and they're flat on the other end. And the flat on the other end looks like they just, it almost looks like you're making a samurai sword, and you only flipped it over once. In other words, you didn't keep beating it back and forth to make it even. It's really pretty rough looking, and um, I'm tempted to replace these. The problem with replacing them is it's going to be a chore because I'm going to have to chip all this stuff off that's next to the figure and put another thing. I may still do it anyways um, because it just looks kind of sloppy. Um, my first army, my feudal Spanish, I didn't have the skills yet 
really to or the foresight to replace them so they have these these type of um, spears but I'm not a fan of them um, that said they're not soft metal um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna replace them but this is probably what is going to be on the on the Emperor's Emperor's command post and um, these guys will be around him. I'm probably going to put four guys on each side. He's going to be heavily armed. He's going to have a lot of freaking guys with him. So probably uh, at least four of these figures with the other three. That's seven plus the Emperor. That's eight. It's on a 40 by 40 stand. That's probably about as busy as I'm going to be able to get it. So we're going to put these Varangian guards with the commander. And I'm going to bag this, this stuff together because they're going to go. This is the command post. So... And I think it's going to look really, really cool. Um, and I'm probably going to make the shields that the, these Varangian guards have all be the same for those four guys on the Emperor's stand. I'm not going to go batshit crazy and make them individual like I will on the regular Varangian guard. These will all have the same motif, whatever that is. And I'm leaning towards it probably being um, red, a red background with with a black eagle or something like that. But the other thing I have to consider is it's got that damn boss in the way. And I love shields with a boss, but when you're trying to put an emblem and you have the freaking boss in the middle of the emblem, it just doesn't look right. And it's a pain in the ass to paint around. So let's go to where all my drug bags are. way too big but we're gonna put all these command post guys in here see I just screwed around and solved the problem solved an issue right, so these guys are all going to go together during the day or really cold at night it's on horseback for part of the trip camping out I haven't been horseback riding in a couple years now trail riding I should say that not horseback riding we just kind of steer the horse in familiar territory for the horse hey we only go once a year so wherever he takes us is good enough for me Accomplished something fun today. Except I want to look, want to look at the knights. So we're going to open up the knights. Ha. Now I've got about 12 knights from the other guys. So half of my knights are going to be, about half of my knights are going to be um, Elaine Tulare. The other half are going to be these old glory guys. And I already noticed the other day that some of them had lances that were broken. Which isn't a problem because I'm just going to replace them all anyway. So let's take a look at what horses come in here. These come with half armored horses. Well, I don't know that... I'm going to do that. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to give them half armored horses. I need to do a little bit of research before I decide to go down that way. They're yeah, all half armored. If I decide to go with unarmored horses, I have tons of old glory unarmored horses. Just tons and tons of them. So, But these are nice. They've got the half scale armor and they've got little tassels back here so we can do the tassels different colors and things like that now my intention with the knights is they're all going to be painted in units 
of three. So every three guys on a stand will have the same shield. And then the next group of three guys will have a different shield and that and so forth. They're not going to be individually shielded. And um, wow, this guy has a very unique face. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Man, can you guys even see this? Let's see. I got to get my glasses to see what you guys are seeing. It's just too bright. The reflection is just too much. What if, what if we did something crazy? What if we did, let's go in here and mess with the brightness. Okay. And add contrast. Nope. Wrong way. And oh, I mean, this extra delay is terrible. Okay. Let's see if this is better. He has a great face. So there's one guy. Too many different poses come in here. And some great looking armor. God, I can't I can't do jack shit without glasses. Or contacts. Well if I do contacts then I don't. That's some awesome looking scale male armor. These are a hard alloy for sure. But we're going to place them anyways. Look, they're thin to the front. And when you turn them sideways, they're flat. They're almost like carrying like flat pieces of steel. Okay. Those are different poses. This is yet a different pose. Yep, he's different from this guy. What do we got here? Here's the same awesome dude over here. Here is this guy. This guy is he's on his team. Yeah, okay. Uh, this guy is this team here. This guy is a guy with a broken lance. And he's a totally different pose. And he has big old googly eyes. Let's see. He has big old googly eyes. He's his own man. What's this horse doing over here? Get out of here. And one of these. So we only have one of this pose with a broken lance. He's the only one with a broken lance. Maybe there's something wrong with that form. They got out there. And this is one, two, three stands of knights, and I think they've got like four or five max. So I'm really happy with these knight figures. Um, these guys have chain and and almost like banded armor. These guys have that cool type of scale, and then these guys are all chain, and then this guy is all chain so some variety of different armors there from the old glory figures i really like them i, I like them a lot a lot a lot so um another thing that i found out searching is um talking about emperors um byzantines the first emperor that was that grew a beard was um heraclius and from then on all Rome, all Eastern Roman emperors, all Byzantine emperors had beards. Didn't know that. So, um, so focus and forward. All were clean shaven. Focus may have had a beard as well. But Maurice forward. All had were clean shaven. Don't want to use it. Don't want to use an emperor with a beard, and he is trying to represent somebody earlier. 
So that's a no-no. Not a no-no, but if you have that information and you want to act upon it, which I do, it's a way of learning, then you do it. You know? All right. Well, it was a fun little soiree. Okay. Very cool you guys could join me on that journey. I love doing stuff like that. We talk figures here. All right, what did I miss? Uh, are you really going to get that many miniatures on a 40 by 40 space? Absolutely. How many, let's see how many are on the Pope. We got to brighten this up. And that's why I turned the brightness up earlier. Uh, brightness up. Okay. The Pope has a chair. I, I figure the Pope and the chair are going to take up about the same amount of space as the mounted general. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six other guys on there. So I definitely can have a couple of guards on either flank. A guy holding a banner, which will be in front of the general, in front of the emperor. And who else? We got a guy bowling a horn and a guy with a mace. Uh, yeah, I can get everybody in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll be fun. It'll be... It's probably going to be my next favorite stand. So... Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, the Canadians refuse to stop sharing their Arctic win with me during winter. I've told them before, stop, but they don't listen. That's 86 degrees to minus four for you U.S. types. Yeah, I'm anti-metric when it comes to temperature. I just can't fathom it. I can get close and guess, but I can use the metric system for everything else, but I can't visualize temperature. And I like the metric system. I mean, the metric system makes sense, but you have to realize if it goes zero to 100, that's freezing to boiling, right? You're never going to use anything over 40, ever. I mean, unless you're a freaking scientist or a nerd burglar and you're sitting dealing with test tubes, we're not boiling shit, you know? So you talk about air temperature, you don't need to go higher than 40, right? So you're using zero to 40 and then negative numbers. So you're, you're, mis you're wasting a lot of your number line, you know, 41 through 100 on stuff that you're never going to talk about. So it's not practical. Um, the mentality behind it it makes complete sense. It's per, it's a hundred based thing, and it's based in in reality of things. But the numbers just, you know, they they just don't make any sense. They don't make any. They're not useful for for you know human conditions. Maybe in a in a lab or something like that. You know, maybe. The same thing with the the measurement on metric. And I'm not anti-metric at all. By any means, I am pro like miniatures. Absolutely do millimeters. It makes sense. I'm actually, I hate 360 force and that type of retardation is just drives me bananas. And I work in a construction industry type thing. And it's absurd. Okay. The fractions and stuff like that. But the meter, your one, your everything is based on is too big of a unit because there's too many things that are that, that you use in your daily life that are somewhere between a foot and two and a half feet long okay whatever it is whether it's all those dimensions are all the time and, and the numbers for them are too huge when you use a metric system because nobody uses decimeters for shit so centimeters the numbers become way too big so you you have this idea that it's going to be very large and it's just something that's you know 
this sized. So, but I still like it. But the problem is, is that I think that the way to have done it would have been um, engineering scale feet. Is keep the foot because the foot's good. You know, I like twelve inches, but don't do inches. They, they got to be. They got to. You got to divide your inches by ten. You got to divide the the foot by ten or something. It's got to be decimal. You know, even the freaking barbarian Mongols knew how to use decimal. You know, so I am not anti-metric at all. I I could deal with the I could deal with the temperature thing because I don't use that that much. I, I like metric. I don't want to use. What are you basing your figures on? One inch by inch and a quarter. No, I quarter inches is just are just dumb as hell. You know, um, trivia facts for the day: Byzantine emperors and beards. Yeah. Well, it's it's cool to learn things. I think it's interesting to learn things. Now, I'm not interested in learning everything about everything, but um, yeah. Screen can't see much. I don't know what's going on. Um, there's nothing else on. Drones seem to stop as soon as Hans joined. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I haven't done anything different. It's, it's way too much effort to do things differently. And all of a sudden, they just like, oh, Tony has a nice feed. Yeah, let's go fuck with him. So what bugs me is I'm not a very jealous person. I don't think I'm a very jealous person. But I am jealous about one thing. I'll get on Facebook, and there's one guy in particular. And I think he's a nice guy. Um, I haven't met him, but he has a nice guy. He has a show where he's always streaming his game. And he had this morning 464 people watching him stream this game. And he plays this game that's kind of not very involved. And he does a lot of chit-chatting. And I think that's why people watch him, because they, they want the, the back-and-forth communication. Maybe that's, some, maybe that's one of the reasons why some of you watch this channel. So I appreciate that. But he has 464 people watching at that time. That's a lot of freaking folks, right? And his stream never fails. He doesn't have any issues with it. He doesn't have any hiccups. And I'm kind of jealous of that guy. I'm kind of jealous that like, you know, I'm like, I'm providing a service of like really interesting shit that you may not get anywhere else. And I got all these hiccups, you know? That's, that's the only jealousy I get. I don't get jealousy about, man, that guy's got a nice car asshole i don't get into stuff like that you know somebody has something nice you know I, i'm happy for him you know but i just want i want i want equality i want to get my message out as well and as crisp a thing so i don't know what i got to do but um i'm gonna blame it on the drones at this point did we get done with this course guy we did didn't we yeah okay two left to go we got to find out who we're going to do these guys in. Um, one of these guys is exactly the same pose as the last guy I did. Oh, actually, this is the guy we were working on. Yeah, and he's done. So let me show you what I got here, and I'll show you why I'm going to do what's left. So we got a yellow knight. We got a red. We got a predominantly red. We got a blue. We got a blue and yellow. We got the Cuban knight. That's what I call this guy. Because red and it turned into be like the Cuban flag red. And the blue ended up being like the Cuban flag blue. And then this guy that's that's white, but he's got a blue and white shield. So this is, this is what we have so far. We got two knights left to go. The Polish knight's the most common color was red. So one of these two guys left is going to be a red knight. No doubt about it. Okay. And it's probably going to be this guy. Okay, the guy I just painted, which is this yellow one, I'm probably going to make him a predominantly red knight. And then this guy, I'm probably going to do some form of white, mostly white on him. Um, this is a figure that is, I have one of them in my Hungarian army, and I believe he's dominantly red. So I don't want the same figure dominantly red. So he's going to be white, he's going to be red. So, and... They may look okay, but they're not sealed yet, so they got some shine in places where they shouldn't have shine. And that all fix itself when we get to that other part. So I bought my powerful internet here to save Tony. Dun da da dun. Excellent. How is Germany today?
How is Germany today? Okay, um, so here's what we got so far. So let's put these guys out of the way. What game is he streaming? He's the guy who does um, a truck simulator. His name's Rockland USA. I've listened to him for a little bit. He seems like a cool guy. And he has, he's constantly talking. He talks a hell of a lot more than I do. And, um, I, you know, and I'm not even, I'm not jealous of followers because my purpose in doing this is not to be famous. I'm just, I want to be entertained while I'm doing my hobby. And there's a couple, there's a few things I've learned throughout my hobby. I want to share those with you guys. I don't want to be, you know, autographing people's shit. You know, that's not the purpose of it. But I do want the people that are getting the message to get have a quality message, to have quality visuals. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can with it without driving myself crazy. So, um, yes, you did. Well, don't stay humble. Don't brag too much or, you know, don't say, oh, I actually got away with it yesterday. I said, hey, it's storming and hopefully it doesn't get cut off and we didn't get cut off. If you, if you guys watched that battle of the classical Jewish battles, I brought that up a few times. Stay humble. Don't brag or God's going to get you. Those are fun. So anyway, so if you guys have watched the scenario games you have, I I personally am going to start navigating into more of the scenario gamed stuff as opposed to the Wimp War things and stuff like that. I'm I don't want to say burned out, but it's getting to be a little bit too much of the same. And I enjoy the well, let's just do this now to see what happens. Instead of, hmm, I, I, don't, I don't know what to... Red and white for the last guy. That's probably a good suggestion. That's probably a good suggestion. Yeah, he, he's got to have some motif. So yeah, mostly white with some red, some red motif. Kind of the opposite of this guy. Yeah. All right, let's look at heraldry and see if we end up doing that red and white guy next or uh, or that. All right, so let's go into, and I admit I'm I'm uh, I am not the best at this. I I don't know how to show you the screen without flipping the camera around. Um, besides, I may have some inappropriate things on Pinterest on there. You guys may you might want to see too, and I don't have anything on there, but. I do all the stuff on my phone anyways. Oh, um, <laughs> let's see. Um, where is, this is so user unfriendly. Cause their things don't say, they don't say anything. All right, so we need a red guy and we need a all right, let's go. We did him. We did the Bullmeister. We did that one. That S thing looks weird. I don't want to do the wreath. Geometric shapes. I don't want to do a Fleur de Lis type looking thing. This isn't a French army. I got nothing against the Fleur de Lis, but we don't need to encroach on their uh, proprietary stuff. No, I don't see anything there. It jumps out at me. All right, what about um, this one? This is the other one. The lobster. Yeah, the lobster is interesting. It ended up looking like a freaking cockroach if I don't do it right. And I absolutely hate cockroaches. If there's a button I could press that would rid the world of all cockroaches, I'd press it multiple times. Just for good measure. Yeah, I'm not doing no damn lobster. Pol what is a Polish lobster, anyways? Well, if it's anything like the Polish jokes, it could be a uh, it could be a cockroach. <laughs> Arrows. No, I don't like any I don't like anything on here. No, I don't like anything on here. So let's go to this other screen where there's some other shields. 
and I don't mind that half circle there with a with a plus on it. The fish is okay. I gotta show you. I gotta show you guys this. I gotta show you the screen. This is crazy. This is crazy. I always talk about bad heraldry. I was blessed that I have good. I have good personal heraldry. My my, our family's heraldry is a yellow background, with a black. I've seen it both double headed eagle, or a or a or single headed eagle. Kind of like Germany, a nice, nice heraldry doesn't get much better than that. If you get to pick your own heraldry, I'd probably pick the same thing I have. Let's put it that way. But some people, they lost big time on the heraldry thing. And here's one of the losers. And let me go in between. Okay. I don't know if you guys can even see this because this whole picture and picture and picture and picture is what I see. But there's a heraldry down here at the bottom. It looks like a pair of hands just cut off. That guy's ancestor didn't have a good day. And there's just some things that just don't make any sense. Like, for instance, I don't like heraldry. Like, you've got this a blue background with a yellow line. Pretty cool, right? But half of it is covered up with this other symbology. That's just, I'm not going to do that. And this kind of looks like the Puerto Rican flag, but with the colors different. I think the middle color is yellow. We're not doing that. We're not having a Puerto Rican Polish night. This is Poles, not Puerto Ricans. Let's go back. I don't know if you guys can see this stuff at all because I honestly don't understand how the whole picture in picture, you guys see like multiple pictures, things. I, so I apologize if you're seeing utter and complete crap. Um, but I know that where the phone was pointing before, you weren't going to see it. We got this guy with an ax. That guy's okay. That guy's all right. What else we got? This is just a Pinterest I created with Polish Knights. Stuff I found on the internet. Here's some horseshoes and such. That's not so, that's not so bad. This is a cool symbol, but man, that's going to be a pain to pull it off. And um, you know, it's half. It's an antler half on a red half. The shield split red and red and white. On the red section, there's a white antler. On the on the white section, there's a red um, horn, like something from a bull. Um, and of course, we've got the, the duck dude, the quackers. I don't want to have to paint three of those. Griffin, way too complicated. I mean, if I had to do a certain commander and I had to do that, okay, I have to do that. But I don't have to do that. Nothing there. All right. So I think what we're going to do is... Poor guy with three hands. We got like a cheetah or a leopard with an arrow through his throat. Through his throat. <laughs> These two, I don't mind them, but they look a little too close to what I'm already doing. All right, let me put this back. I don't know if you guys saw any of that or I annoyed you by you not being able to see it, but I don't have a producer, so. This is just some dumbass painter named Tony trying to get by. And I'm sure you guys will tell me. Biggest cockroach I ever saw was in Orlando. I hate those things. I absolutely, you know, people are scared of spiders. That's what I'm scared of. Those huge freaking palmetto bug flying roaches. Spiders are small. I mean, you can like, if you don't like spiders, fine, stomp them. You know, you can catch them. A cockroach, you'd never catch them. They're like on crack the whole time. Did you and Mitch go to Temple in the end? No, it's his turn to go first, and he said he, he hadn't gone, so I'm following his lead. Since I game with Frank Chadwick, I had a lot of his books. I could have asked him to autograph them, but I never did. I never dawned on me that he was known in the industry. Yeah. I wouldn't want a book autographed. Then I wouldn't want to use it. 
you know, really enjoy the scenario games. Me too. I was watching the Scipio one, but didn't finish yet. Well, that dropped the same day. On Friday, Friday morning, I had a 5 a.m. meeting. And after my meeting, I went and had breakfast by myself. And I get a notification from Connor that he put more scenarios down. And I was already planning, I was already on the fence of whether I was going to game with Mitch on Friday. That same day. To do another set of scenarios. And when I saw that they dropped, I'm like, well, F it. Let's do them the same day they dropped. I looked them over and they looked interesting. Um, he's got other scenarios. Um, but they're just not as, they're not as varied as the ones we've done. That doesn't mean we're not going to do the other ones. We, we're almost certainly going to do the other ones. What order we're going to do them in, it depends. There's a couple of them in Spain. There's only two in there. Uh, including one that involves a, a wagon that's on fire. Almost kind of like Spartacus, right? You roll it down the hill and see what it hits. So a side chariot. Now, you know, we're invariably going to do that, but it's only two scenarios. And um, there's one with Hannibal. But I don't really want to do Trasimene or Trebia. Those two are in there. There's one where he's crossing the Alps that looks pretty pretty cool. So maybe we'll combine that with one of the other ones. Um, where he gets attacked by Gauls from all directions going in there. And um, what else has he got? He's got a series of other ones from the Second Punic War. Um, we've got a set of four that we made ourselves. One of them is the Battle of Aque Sextae that there is a video out on it on my channel. Um, but we did four, a quad of them. And um, the only gripe with them is they were done with felt terrain. And I really don't want to put scenarios out there done with felt terrain because they look kind of they look kind of shitty, to be honest with you. Um, after you're used to seeing other things, they look pretty crummy. So um, that's kind of what's turned me off from from even doing them. Uh, doing those because there are three other ones that have been been play, been play tested quite a bit, and uh, with Aqua Sexte we had the Battle of um, uh, Heraclea, um, which is uh, Pyrrhus and Rome. We have um, the Dog Hill ones, whatever it's called, Cenocephaly, and what is the last one that we have? Man, I'm drawing a blank. Two of them favor the barbarian or the non-Roman, and two of them favor the Roman. So, no. One of them favors each, and two of them are balanced. Oh, Herdonia. That's a scenario based on another scenario somebody did on Fanaticus. And it's the Romans coming out of a camp to meet the Carthaginians, to meet Hannibal. Um in the middle of Italy after, after Can I, Can I. So that one's actually, that one's balanced towards the Carthaginians and the Cynocephaly is balanced towards the Romans and the other two, Aque Sexte and Heraclea, go either way about 50-50. Heraclea, Heraclea, I've called it both. Um, I'm, I'm going to save that one until I get my Pyrrhus army done so he looks correct he's my favorite Greek commander but easily easily nobody is as, as interesting to me as that guy and um, okay so what in the four hells am I going to do We're going to do this red and white guy with that split shield that's, um, that's the horn and the antler. But all of this comparison stuff is going to be white. I'm not going to quarter it and doing, you know, I don't need to spend a week doing this one guy. Okay? That's my, that's my thinking and that's what I'm going to roll with. So let me get this bigger. Well, let me find which one he's at. Where is he? There he is. And we're going to minimize this screen. And put it over here in the corner so I can see it. 
I'm voting for the duck. It's a duckling nice shield. Maybe I'll do that on the other one. Because they're both red and white. So that's kind of... You like the red shield with the diagonal line with the diamond shapes in it. Oh, you did? Derpa? Is that what his name is? Derpa Derpa. I can't read what it is. Yeah. Do you guys have any cool heraldry or you guys get stuck on the with some shitty one like Mitch's that has a freaking pot plant? I don't know if it's a pot a pot plant, just a freaking potted plant. Stupid. Like I said, I'm I'm blessed in that department. You know, if that's important to you, I think it's very important. Maybe I think that way because I have a cool one. <laughs> oh, shit. Speaking of cool one, we got to put our flag back up. Oh, botch that one. And I'm going to need to go to the bathroom real quick. I might as well before we get started. Okay. We'll be right back in no time.
Okay, have to head out now. See you on the flip side. Okay. A second battle with the Carthaginians coming on the road and we are in need of variable. So Carthus could arrive any time between turn one and three. Well, I didn't design the battles. I'll tell you right now. I, when I've designed scenarios, the idea is if they're a one-sided scenario, you need to make them so that you're generally going to get the results that happen historically. So if it's likely that the Carthaginians are going to win, you need to structure the game so that they have an advantage in that. And that's just my thinking. There shouldn't be a 50-50 chance of winning every time. Scenario 2's weakness is that historically it was an ass-whipping by the Carthaginians on the Romans. The other brother died in that battle. And the way it's set up now, now given Mitch rolled like crap, okay, for pips. Um, the way it's set up now, the advantage has the Romans have the advantage. So unless you are a really incompetent Roman commander, and you figure out exactly what you need to do as the Carthaginians, you're not going to have historical results of that scenario. That's my only problem with it. But it was different. It was definitely different when the troops came on. So. You don't know what my heraldry is, so I've come up with a new one, which is two crossed churros. It's a hard. It's hard to get a good churro. It's hard. You got to go to Miami to get them here. You can't go to somewhere in Orlando and says we got churros. Those aren't churros, pal. A good churro is awesome. <laughs> so. That is my, that's at least my motivating thing, generally. So if you're going to set up a scenario that historically was a complete ass whipping for the Romans, then you shouldn't give the, Ro the Carthaginians an advantage, you shouldn't give the, you shouldn't give Romans an advantage, and you shouldn't handicap the Carthaginians when it's something that the Carthaginians just completely destroyed the Roman player. It should be an uphill battle for the Roman. In my opinion. Um, but again, Mitch did roll like crap. You know, he only rolled a one pip. And um, you know, I definitely wanted to set up and go after that auxiliary as fast as I could because I already knew what the second half of the game was going to turn into. It never turned into that because, like I said, he had such a hard time coming on here. But I didn't want my forces to piecemeal be surrounded. And just like my general, if you notice my comment, I had my general on that one flank because I wanted to get him the hell out of there. I could already see it being, you know, four units attacking my general from the from the rear. And he turns around. He's fighting his own battle. I'm not, I'm not going to lose the game that way. I'm going to lose a different way. So I scooted him around that one side because I figure if you're going to come after the general, you're going to have to come in single file and you're going to have to go through that bad go next to that bad going piece where those bad going troops are going to inflict lots of threat zones on you and making it difficult for you to advance. So I wasn't going to have any, ha any, any part of that. And that was, that might just be experience just playing games. Just, I knew how that was going to turn out, but it ended up being kind of a, a mute point because he rolled so poorly coming on. So. Mm. All right. So we've got this heraldry that we took away that we need to bring back. Where is it? There it is. Back here in the corner.
All right, we need to do a split shield. And the whole horse comparison is going to be white. All right, let's go ahead and knock that out of the out of the way. And we'll use gray. We'll use black for the Let's make sure we got enough white here. I don't know why there's stream issues. There's literally nothing running in the house. No one's awake. This is when it should run better than any time before. I have no idea. But it's one of the reasons why I like to say frequently that I hate technology. Because everything's working fine one day and the next day you don't do anything different and it's not. And unfortunately, I don't have the skill set to make it better. I mean, I do, and it's not, I don't, th I don't think it's the internet here. Because I've done a speed test, and it's not a, when it was acting weird, and it wasn't a speed test issue. And I'm able to play video games online with multiple people with all kinds of planes in the freaking air, and it runs smooth as butter. So, maybe it's on YouTube's end. And the thing with the internet is it's really easy to find answers to questions you may have. And it's also really easy to find wrong answers to questions you have. So if you know something about a subject and you want to look up more information about it, it's really relatively easy to find out stuff about that subject. And because you know a little bit about it, to go to, to kind of feel out and know which responses to your question are complete bullshit or wrong. Okay, but when you don't know anything about a subject, you you could be, be you could be being fed wrong information and don't know it until you go down that path and realize, well, this isn't right at all. And that's the problem with computer stuff for me. It's like you look and oh well, you fix it by doing this. So you go and try that and you spend an hour being frustrated. And it doesn't get you where they said that it was going to get you. So then you got to try it again. And um, yeah, I don't have the patience for that, unfortunately. Um, maybe if I lived alone or if everybody was on vacation. But I, um, I kind of feel, especially when everybody's awake, I kind of have like a ticking talk. Ticking talk? A ticking clock as far as getting everything done. I feel like I'm self-rushed. You know, hurry up and finish something before I get interrupted and lose my train of thought kind of thing. So last thing I want to do is spend three hours coming up with a dead end thing. That's why I stopped making my videos as complicated as they are. And they weren't really that complicated, but there was a lot of like panning views and stuff like that of the figures. And I'm like, if I do stuff like that, my editing process is going to take is going to go from 15 minutes to like two and a half hours and that's just two and a half hours I don't have and it was creating a lot of stress for me to get this stuff done before I had to go to work or get some painting done or, or something else it was it was not what I wanted to do at the time and I'm like no, I'm gonna either stop filming or I gotta I gotta stop I gotta stop doing this or stop filming so Editing videos and uploading videos is not my idea of a good time. The editing videos actually isn't bad. It's all the other crap that goes along with it.
let's bring this uh, bring this stuff up. Now maybe somebody out there finds uh, doing all the video stuff very rewarding, or it's it is rewarding, but the whole process is it takes a lot longer than it should. takes a lot longer than it should and I want to get back to doing stuff that that's gonna make me relax like doing this talking about figures that's always good all that kind of stuff that's therapy editing videos and uh, and uploading things while it ties up my phone is, is not my idea of uh, relaxation Not my idea of a good time. And I don't like being interrupted, leaving things unfinished. So much so that there was a show that we used to watch when my daughter was littler, was smaller. Well, it had just come out at the time. And it's a show that most of you are probably familiar with that has, it developed quite a big following. It was a cool show. It's called Mythbusters. And um, when it first started out, they'd have like three different myths that they needed to bust. And I, I swear, so much of stuff that goes on with society these days creates problems like ADHD and ADD and shit like that. It just creates stuff like that. Whether it's when those vines came out and it's this little video, okay, that's cool. But they're like five seconds long, and then you move to something else. So every five seconds, you're bombarded by something totally different. And your brain just gets used to it, or it's just a freaking jumbled mess. Um, I don't operate well in those type of situations. And, and, and I didn't care for um, the programming change that Mythbusters did maybe a year or a year and a half in, where you know they had 30, I think it was a, I think it was a one hour show, minus commercials or whatever. And they have three different myths that they wanted to bust. And instead of going and setting one up and finishing that one, and setting one up and finishing that one, and going and setting one up and finishing that one, they would do this one in, th in three minutes of it. And they would switch to the second one and do three minutes of it. And then go to the other one and do three minutes of it. And then it would go back to the first one. They would hop around. And it's extremely unsatisfying to not have anything accomplished. And it just bugged me. I'm like, I don't need any more of that. My, and, um, that in my life I get that shit at work all the time where you have to start three things and not finish any of them and um, yeah I'm not going to volunteer to do that crap you know so that type of programming that kind of stuff really kind of turns me off you know um, watching some show and it's not complete so it's an ongoing show whether it's Game of Thrones or whatever Let's say it's Game of Thrones and you're watching it live and it leaves you hanging and you got to wait until next week where you remember, if you remember all the freaking plot of where the thing was at so they can tease you a little bit and also leave you hanging. I'm like, I, I don't like television in, in that manner. Maybe it's just spoiled because that's how things always used to be, but I, I want a sense of accomplishment. That's why I haven't gone and jumped on the Byzantines yet. Because then I, I started all these polls and didn't finish them. Well, why did I even bother starting them if I wasn't going to finish them? I wasn't always this way. But um, it's not very, very satisfying to leave a bunch of things half done.
for me. But I think so many things just condition us to put up with that nonsense. And, um, you know, you're distracted. You're going in all kinds of different directions, which means you're going to make mistakes, which are unsatisfying. I find making mistakes, are, you know, they're, they're a necessary part of life. But, you know, if you're making mistakes because you're distracted, then you need to get rid of your distractions. Um... Well, making mistakes is unsatisfying. Unfinishing things is unsatisfying. Um, playing games that don't that aren't finished also unsatisfying. That's why I like this DBA game so much. If you finish every game, there's not a well. I would have won if these guys would have just come in the next, which they were coming next turn. You know, no excuses. Just you freaking lost, dude. You know, shit happens. You rolled bad. Somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose. But that is one of my pet peeves is being interrupted. I absolutely detest it. So sometimes I do get in the habit of talking faster than than my my mouth talking faster than my brain can handle it or maybe the other way around but because I just feel like you know we'll game after work my whole day has been hurry up and do this before you get interrupted and sidetracked and forget you lose your spot then you got to spend 10 minutes trying to figure out where you were you know, and then you make mistakes along the way. I, I've tried everything to avoid doing that because um, that's kind of my nemesis. So. I'm always working things on work that have a critical path. And people don't, and I'll explain that a little bit because people don't really, some people don't really understand what that means. That means is. 10 tasks you have to do and you have to prioritize all your tasks because you don't need to do something else that if it's not important that it gets done right this moment because if you don't do this other thing first it holds up the entire flow of operations it's like an order of operations basically it's not the order that I want to do them in but sometimes you have to do one thing first because it's going to hold up seven people whereas the other task is only going to hold up one um so prioritize everything. And lots of people are really bad at that. Really, really, really bad at that. Um, just because you come into my office next doesn't mean you're next. It depends what your thing is, you know. And if you're going to talk to some, something that happens in two weeks, I'm dealing with something that just canceled for tomorrow. We need to address that first. And lots of people don't get that. And that's just not, and not necessarily in my workplace. I think it pretty much happens everywhere. You know, you got to prioritize stuff, you know. Not everything has the same importance. All right, we need to. Oh, this is going to be tricky. This is going to be tricky. All right, we need to drop a line. Here we go again with the dropping lines. People are really bad at that. All right, that's where the split's going to be between one shield color and the next. So I'm going to go ahead and do, in black, the design of both of these things on either side of the shield because they have the same basic shape. 
just one of them has the antler parts on it and the other one's smooth. So they end pretty close to here. And they're gonna tie in about down here. That's a little too watery. We gotta be careful. We got to, a mess we gotta clean up. How far out did they go? They go out pretty far. You go out pretty far. Okay. So let's see if I can get this in a screen. Oh, I may not have even been in the screen. Oop, my apologies. Almost like a smiley face, kind of. Okay. And then let's do the smooth one first. It's the red side. Okay, and the other side with the same red. Well, yeah, let me let me do the white one on the other one. Okay, now, we'll fill with white the rest of the shield here. Switch back to red. And fill in this part with the red. So now we have half and half. Let's come in and add more red to it. And 
add more red to this. not put any black in it and do the same thing with the white. White on the other end. And of course, one thing I'd forgotten completely about was that this side's the antler. One, two, three, four, five. So one in the middle, two above the curve, two below. Got it. below. And then we're going to highlight this in pure white.
I'm glad there's a little bit of the highlighting now on the red. Why is it so blurry? apartment over here to minimize this now no okay We're not going to add yellow to this red. We're going to add a little bit of white to it. pretty happy with how it turned out. Let's put this somewhere where I'm not shaking it around. Not bad. Okay. Beverage time. Be right back. Okay. Well, Hans must have left the bit. The internet's back to being garbage. Or YouTube's back to being garbage.
just so you know, I do have, for inspiration, the Warhammer Ancient Battles Beyond the Golden Gate Byzantine book. So that's going to be definitely inspiration for that. Whether or not I agree with somebody's interpretations of what the figures look like it might be something a little different, but... Well, the good news is there's no mowing today. Because it rained cats and dogs yesterday. got here five six five welcome welcome am i missing part of the feed no everybody's just diligently working on stuff So I just finished a book on Byzantine history. And started another one. Figure we're going to be on there for a while. And it was, it was interesting learning about folks that I really didn't know much about. Which is most of those folks. Now, I had listened to the Byzantine podcast for a while, and I, I don't really care for the the guy's meter and his voice. He just kind of bores me. He doesn't. It's not a good fit for me. But I actually may go back to him after I finish this other book to get some more juicy nuggets out of certain areas. Because um, 
because there's some parts of it that I'm not particularly interested in because just it just involves stuff that's not warfare. You know, I don't care how important it was. I don't care to, you know, religious controversies and iconoclasm and stuff like that just don't interest me. You know, I've I've already heard enough about it that I don't want to really, really listen to any more of it. Um, so I'd probably skip those episodes of the Byzantine podcast, which I'd gotten into probably maybe about 800 AD before I, uh, before I quit it. So I did watch a few episodes. Listen to a few episodes. It just didn't, it just didn't grab me. It didn't grab me. So... And it was a big part of the history or whatever. But that's, you know, I'm, I'm interested in stuff that's kind of motivate me to, to play games. But, you know, likewise, if I was building, say, a, um, a um, thematic Byzantine army, I probably wouldn't use the really elaborate uh, uh, flags and banners and stuff. Because that's a good part of that time period involved that kind of classic stuff. Which, you know, they didn't want all these holy, you know, over-the-top um, depictions of saints and stuff like that. Um, so, there's a more Puritan-type, I guess, background. I personally love Byzantine art, but I'm not going to go and kiss it and think it's, you know, some powerful device that it isn't. You're finishing off your own six millimeter Franco Prussian War. Prussians. I need to get the army finished today so I can get back to painting DBA armies from tomorrow. Yeah, knock them out. Don't jump around. It's good to stick with something. It's good to stick with something. I have a feeling I'm going to be doing Byzantines for a long ass time. Other than building one army and then the other units to make the modifications of two other ones, I may get talked into doing the um, the Marikian before the Mauritian, even though it's spelled with a K, Marikian uh, army before I leave, because that's the we have several of the enemies that that army fights, and it'd be a good fit in there for that. So we'll see. But I do some of those earlier armies and I'm, I'm definitely going to have to get the Little Big Man Studios flags. Because these later ones that come mean an army kind of, it sucks. The, their banner sucks. And you'll see it down there in the corner. When we start working on that stuff, just like we have the Polish one, it's just kind of a boring banner. You know, it has no depictions of the Madonna or baby Jesus or any emperors or anything like that. It has just red, white, and blue and a simple cross. And kind of boring, you know, so... Well, my prediction is, my prediction is going to be that as soon as I'm gun done with my, towards the end of the project of my Comnene and Byzantine, Kurosan miniatures will come out with a Byzantine Comnene army. I don't have any knowledge of the fact, but the last several armies I've done, that's, that's exactly what's happened. <laughs> so 
unfortunately, he's just not as gauge as the guy who did History of Rome. I agree with you completely. I think the guy who did History of Rome is excellent. Now, he may not be any fun at parties. Uh, he might be a, a bit on the nerd burglar side, but he does an excellent way. He, and he has, if I remember correctly, a really dry sense of humor, which I actually liked the way he... I, I tend to not like dry sense of humor generally, but the way he... He is really good at what he did. He, he, he did an excellent job. And... Um, and I like those type of shows because you can drive on the way to work, you can mow the lawn, um, you can work on your hobbies, and you can learn little snippets of stuff that maybe help you fill in the gap between, you know, maybe you don't know exactly what happened between Justinian and Heraclius, and you want to help fill in that gap so that you can go into more detail, you know, have some basic information on who the hell Focus was. So maybe you want to read more about him or his campaigns, or whatever he did. Just some basic information to kind of help fill in the blank and put everything into perspective, because I think history is, you know, history is all about, at least for me, putting everything into perspective, especially geographically as well. So like those YouTube programs that are done by, I think there's three of them that do them, and, and I'm going to be missing one of them, but um, Baz Battles is one of them, and then... Um, and then, uh, what is it? Kings and Generals. And there's one more. And that's the one I always forget which one. I don't know if it's History and Victor or one of those. But those guys all do history programming, not with a historian being interviewed. But they talk about what they're doing. And they move the icons around on a map. And I, I am a very geographically minded person. So I learn really well that way. Um, so those things really work well for me. So... You know, you watch a podcast to kind of give you the information between maybe some different battles that you went in there. At least that's how I look at it. Um, I've said it before. Wargaming has always been about learning for me. So it's a way to... I want to build these guys. Well, let me find out what makes them tick. Or what about the time period? And that'll decide who it is, you know. And... Um, you know, I've... That's how I learned well. Because um, I didn't like school. Okay, I didn't like going to school. and But I like learning. But I like learning about what I, I want to learn about, you know. I don't give a shit about no quadratic formula or algebra 2 or, you know, stuff like that. Just like I like to read. Do I like anything that they assigned to me in school to read? Hell no. It was all garbage as far as I was concerned, but they made me read it. But do I like reading? Absolutely. Um, but you know, I don't want to read the stuff that they assign. You know, but it's a lot of fun to learn stuff, and the fact that we can take our learning of history and, as I like to loosely say, participate in it by building armies and then playing those battles and learning even more, making some decisions. That's the appeal to me. I can't get that in fantasy gaming. I can't get that in fantasy gaming. It doesn't encourage me to read fantasy. Um, so that's why I like the historical war gaming. Because it encourages me to read about stuff. Like I was what? About a year ago, I was like, when we were playing that Maurice game, I was like, eh, let me let me find out about Peter about um, Frederick the Great. I don't know jack shit about him, you know. Um, and I watched a couple of, of battles on YouTube or whatever, and um, you know, and it was interesting. And especially the people that use maps and and units moving around on the map to kind of understand. It. I mean, there's some periods in history that are just really complex to understand without understanding any geography. Um, Alexander's Successors is one of those. Alexander's Successors is just crazy. And I'm not talking about when, when you get down to like four. I'm not talking when you get down to Ptolemy and the, the, the Ptolemaic, the Seleucids, um, and, uh, and the other one. I'm talking about like at a real, real beginning. Like this guy was his general and the other guy was his secretary. And this guy turned on him, but he became loyal. But these guys, they got to get, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like Game of Thrones to a to, to ridiculous level. And um, 
And a couple of those guys, I forget one of them, did these battles, like the first battles at the beginning, using that map. And it really helped understand me. It helped, it helped me understand a lot, put everything into perspective. Um, and they even use like a little, a little like on the icon of the guy, they have like his little face or a sculpture of him or whatever. So you can kind of put two and two together. I really like that form of, of learning a lot. It works really well for me. Um, yeah, History of Rome was great. And I found out about History of Rome at the same time I was painting my Romans. So that was pretty cool. And um, at the same time that I was watching the Rome miniseries from HBO. So I was having a lot of Rome bombardment at that same time. So that was cool. Without knowing anything but the most basic of information. I mean, But that's why I get so, so upset about TV programming or movies. Like just do history programming. Just tell it as best as you can. You know, it doesn't have to have an agenda. It doesn't have to prove a point that, you know, um, something. Just tell the story for entertainment value. It is, you know, there is some crazy stuff that has happened that nobody has to invent that is much better than... Anything else you could dream up. And then if you take something that is a particular battle or engagement or scenario or something like that, that's say made a movie out of it, like say Braveheart or um, whatever it is, some historical thing, you know, they, they, they change all the details and, and, and change it. I'm, that's, that might be somebody's only exposure that someone has to say Scottish history, you know, people on the street and you're portraying it in a way that is disingenuous to what really happened. Um, I think that's, um, a crime <laughs> to use it lightly, but Um, but I have a different, I have a different purpose than people that make movies, you know, and I'm not really interested in morality plays or, you know, just tell the story, just tell the story and make, draw your own conclusions, you know. This last hour flew by. Jeez. No. Nope. That's what happens. That's what happens.
Now there's probably quicker ways to do this, but I actually enjoy this part a lot. So I really don't want to give this part, this, this up. Some of these fibers of this are coming up. So if you start rubbing too much in the same spot, you're going to have issues. fibers that come up from the from the paper then they you bring them onto your model and you infest them on there they infest the whole area 